Yeah, this is one of those that uh, is not appropriate for me to start off with the peace greeting. Look, you see the title, Good Riddance to Bad Bumble. And I'm not sure if, if it's just going out of business or if it got banned. I, Well, I wouldn't say banned. I mean, who really bans that business? Um, but to make a long story short, I heard that Bumble is going under. They fumbled. Fumbled another bag. And Bumble already was supposed to put women in the driver's seat so that they can make approaches. And we saw what happened. Bumble wound up becoming, uh, well, the women on Bumble would go and they would make these approaches, make the first moves. And the men um, had standards, which was normal. And that was one of the first contexts in which I heard women complain about having to approach men, even though you joined that site so you could do that. Guess which women did it? I mean, let's be honest. I'm not saying it's a natural thing. I do blame Western women for this, even if they think it's natural. But women, Western women that had any options, that had anything to offer, wouldn't get on Bumble because they, unless they had something to offer that was really seriously counterbalanced by something that was a takeaway, they weren't going on Bumble because they didn't want to make the first move. And if you're a Western woman and you refuse to do it, I call you a hypocrite. Straight like that. It's okay to be independent of an individual man but it's not okay to sit up and talk all this independent stuff and then talk about equality, then superiority. And then as soon as it's time to, I don't, I don't know, say something to a man first. I can't do that. I can't respect you. What the F is wrong with you? Why not? Because as you all know, we can't tolerate hypocrisy. We men can't and should not. And I will not. So let's get down to it. Um, this woman sat up and said that uh, this was suggestive of um, the struggle snuggle because these ads came out and said uh, that uh, Bumble, yeah, the Bumble's ads came out and said celibacy is not, or vow celibacy is not the answer. And you know the vow celibacy is not the answer. So let me go ahead and tell you Westernishas why Bumble was right about this. And I'm a Muslim who believes not in celibacy, but in chastity. And I'm telling you why they were right about this. Now, why does a Muslim who does not believe in fornication tell you that they were right to put these things up there? For, for, for number one, vows of celibacy and vows of chastity don't, I mean, vows of celibacy, I should say, and practicing celibacy mean pretty much, I mean, celibacy is you don't even get married and you don't do the bump. You don't bump uglies. It's not a temporary thing. It's not uh, per se conditional. Celibacy meant that's it. That, that Celibacy meant you're not marrying and you're not bumping uglies. You're just single by yourself. You ain't getting none. That's what celibacy meant. You don't marry and no concubines either. So when they put those ads up, that was actually them putting you up on game because, see, women were going on to Bumble talking about some avowal of celibacy or I'm celibate. OK, wait a minute. So if I go on Bumble to make myself available. You're only going to approach me because you're already on a vow of celibacy. So now you can feel better about approaching because you're going to lead with that. Listen, I'm on a I'm on a vow of celibacy, but I'm interested in the, what the hell are you interested in me for? I don't do celibacy and I'm Muslim. I don't do adultery or fornication. And I'm not even bragging. I'm just saying it's against the rules. And I thank my Lord for keeping me away from these things. But celibacy is the opposite extreme. And you come to me with that mess and I'm going to say, well, if you're going to practice celibacy, you don't need me. What the hell? Well, maybe you do need some help or something, but why the hell should I? There'll be somebody else that doesn't practice celibacy. Somebody else that wants to get married and wants to bump and grind. Why would you approach me with that? What the hell makes you think I'm going for that? You were taking the only thing that most Westernishas are willing to eat or left with, I should say. 
Many of you would get rid of that if you could. But you take the one thing that you're left with after you've been socialized to be against men and have attitude and have a worse attitude if you're the, the least bit nice looking or even if you're not nowadays. And some aren't even women and therefore don't have that. And they want to sit up and take even that off the table. You are literally presenting yourself as a bill in exchange for no merchandise. It's literally begging because you're going to ask these men for something that is material, that is financial, that is expensive. You're going to ask them for something like that, but they're supposed to just not. Uh, there's, there's nothing to gain from that. Can't ask you for money. And if he I mean, what you say is celibacy. And let's be honest with you. You're not even lying, because if you did marry him, you wouldn't sleep with him, but you would sleep with somebody else because you don't want to go your whole life without a dingling. You just don't want it from the normal men. What you don't understand is that as much as we talk about 304s and women who sell a bit, not the celibate, if you have to choose between the women who sell a bit and the celibate, I'm telling you that the women who sell a bit are actually more useful. They at least have a niche and some kind of place. They can serve some purpose. I don't like the purpose they serve, but they can serve it. If you could bring concubinage back, they could be concubines instead of just selling a bit. But then again, they could also be given as gifts. And that's not something many of them would tolerate because, hey, look, giving as gifts to somebody who ain't got nobody to, to smash, that's what would wind up being the case. If you're given as a gift to be to someone ain't got no one to smash and you'd be like, but I don't want to sleep with him. Well, you know, concubines don't get to say no. But women who sell a bit also financially don't get to say no. And here you are sitting up and saying, well, this is some sort of a campaign to give men access to our bodies. Well, you're Western. And so without access to your body, you literally are worthless. And I hate to say it like that, but that's what it comes down to. Not because you're Western born, not, e not even really because you happen to grow up in the West involuntarily, but because you will have ingested the socialization of the West. That's what goes along with it. And that will turn around and literally make you useless unless somebody has access to your body because you will not bring anything else of value. You refuse to. And now what you're saying is Bumble is wrong for telling you to bring that. No, Bumble is wrong. Maybe for well, so maybe there's I'm sure that there are other reasons that Bumble is wrong. But when they told you that a vow of celibacy is not the answer, they were right. Catholic priests took vows of celibacy. Nuns took vows of celibacy. How trusted are they now in society? Most of them aren't actually bothering anybody, but how trusted are they in society in these times, in these cases? They're not. They are not trusted now at these, in, in these times, in these cases. As a matter of fact, their institution is not trusted because once somebody comes along and says, hey, look, you know what they're doing to these. Uh, if somebody says, hey, look, my child was harmed. Then what is the institution for years had a policy of just transferring them, just send them somewhere else. Uh, OK, more victims. Now send them somewhere else, more victims. Never. Never actually solving the problem. Hey, you know what? Get evidence and let's take this to the police and get them off the streets and out of the pulpits and all of that. They can, um, they, you know what? They can be the prison chaplains now. They'd never leave. Now it can be that. You see, it's because they took these vows of celibacy. And now because of that, the ones that don't do anything and that are not harmful to anybody are also under a microscope. 
and a suspect. That's what vows of celibacy do. And you're going to have to accept the fact, ladies, that you do not get to let anybody run through you and turn around and tell other men that now you're celibate after you've been ran through. You're not virgins. You won't even you're not even willing to remain virgins until you marry and you're not willing to marry at a young age either. You don't prioritize chastity in any way, form or fashion. None of that. You don't. There's nothing you do to prioritize chastity. So what do you do? You just run through a cock carousel. And then after that, you go to Bumble. And that's if you choose to go to Bumble and now you're going to make the first move, but you're going to present yourself. No, that's not how it works. What you need to do, if you really want to be worth something, according to your rules, not mine. But according to your own rules, if you want to really be worth something to some man, you're going to have to go and make the first move and put that box on the table for the guy to whom other women were not making this offer. Those are your rules, not mine. Congratulations. That's what the game leads to in its end. And those, there are times when some of you even do that, but when you do, you bring in other men's kids, and even then, you're going to cheat on that on that man to whom you finally offer the box. You ain't going to offer it for long and enough. You're still going to go right back to who you were smashing on the side. Only now you're not going to bother the one you're smashing for anything other than that, because you get every other non-sexual met uh, need met by the one you don't really want to smash anyway. And, and the people up, people are, are, are aware of this. That's the essence and the crux of all of this. So Bumble actually for once decided to do you a solid and put you up on your own game. And you're like, oh, my God, no, you're just trying to increase men's access to our bodies. Duh. If you come over here to this part of the world and you want a man to be responsible for you, either he's related to you or you marry him. And if you marry him, you don't have the right to say no. Illness, sure. Traveling. You can't say yes in that case, but just I don't feel like it. Nope, that's not a right you have. And I love that law. Husbands got to perform, too. But you don't have to have a campaign to tell husbands, hey, give your wife some junk. Even when the marriages are arranged and the husbands did not choose the wives, if they really can, if they cannot perform, they know that they must go ahead and divorce. And she's going to ask for it anyway. And that does happen. There are husbands here that don't perform because they're diabetic and they're smokers. Some of them can't get married until their late 20s or early 30s. And by 35, if you're diabetic and you smoke, your junk's going to stop. And their wives divorce them. They're like, yeah, I don't get none. It was that bad back in 2014. There was an article in Arab News about that. Local husbands, it was in English, local husbands get the boot for not giving up the booty. Back in 2014, in an English language newspaper, it was like that. I cracked up when I saw that. I said, you got to be kidding me, man. Really? I mean, you go all these years, you can't get none. Ain't no girlfriends, legally. You get married and then you divorce because, well, there are two things that can lead to that. One, like I said, the, the, the health problems. The other, the other is that some dudes, they just something in their brain snaps because it's not natural, but it snaps in order to get used to that. But then they're just they're not normal after that. For some guys, the marriage came too late and like, that's it. Never mind. <laughs> You know what? My body adjusted to being single and I can't be bothered. I think it's a combination of, uh, of all of them, actually. Some of the guys, there was another thing, too. Some of the guys were victims of other guys when they were in school. Victims of older guys. They were victims. So they're not normal. They never got treated for that type of trauma. There's nobody they could turn to. So they screwed up. And so when they do finally get married, which is probably semi-arranged, they try, but it's, it, you know what? They can't shake. They can't get out of their head what was done to them. And it ain't the wife's fault. And it ain't his fault. But it can't perform, and she's out. 
That's how they deal with celibacy when you marry them and you put that on the table over here. And they get divorces if that's the reason. They got to ask a court for it. But when that's the reason, they get the divorce. The judge is like, that's actually a valid reason. And it's not necessary to even ask the husband, what is the problem? The other thing, too, is there was an obesity problem here amongst men and women alike. So that also led to it. And there were quite a few couples here where the wives were the ones that were obese and the husbands weren't. And when I was uh, when I lived in Ottawa, that was a major problem. A lot of obese people, period. But it, there were more obese women than there were guys. And at younger ages, too, just fat. Fat and nasty. You walk by them in the grocery store aisle and you can feel a shift in the gravity. Yeah, it's bad. Some of them walk down the aisle. Stuff starts falling off the shelves. Not because they knocked it off, but it was just their gravity pulling it as they pass by. Some of them just big nasty that go to the beach and high tide would come in early. Oh, Jupiter ass broads. And the husbands could not perform, but they weren't divorcing them. The sort of women would say, look, I'm going to be fine without you. Bye. Go to the court, get the divorce. I'm not staying with you and you ain't going to hit this. Just big. And you got the nerve to sit up here and talk about vows of celibacy to the point that Bumble had to put you up on your own game according to your own rules that ain't going to work. You sitting up here telling men to pay for the insult. In a nutshell, that's what you're saying. OK, you're the good guy, so I'm going to insult you and you pay for the insult. And then you want to sit up and frame the advice like um, like it's encouraging the struggle snuggle. Every look fornication is different from grape. Adultery is different from grape. That's what you all keep failing to understand. Every time the man gets happy at the end, it's not grape. Some of you simply don't like men being satisfied and studies have proven this because you're evil, nasty, wicked, hateful bitches. And women who are not evil, hateful, and nasty know this about you, but they also know that you're so hateful, evil, nasty, that if they warn us about you, you'll stab them. And everybody can see that. You know, one of the things I'm going to say to some of you broads is, especially the ones you got anything to say about this with Bumble putting y'all up on game. I'm going to tell y'all now, if anybody says anything about black men to travel while well, I'm abroad, I don't mind telling black men to get their stuff together when need be, but if anybody says anything about black, black men traveling while I'm abroad and they don't know I'm black, I'm going to use the fact that they don't know to exonerate them and put all the blame on your funky ass, your hypocritical ass. You're selling a bit, but claiming to be celibate ass. They're going to know. I'm going to tell them, listen, they're like this because they're terribly confused because their own moms and aunts, sometimes moms, usually aunts, big sisters, grandmoms even, and former girlfriends and ex-wives lie to them just so that they wouldn't know and understand women so that are terribly confused. So when they're throwing money, when they're making it rain, or when they're trying extra hard, that's because they've been told that if you don't do these things, you can't compete with the one that does. That's why.
When someone sits up and says, oh, they can't think that that's okay or that that's normal, I'm going to say, well, it's not, but they can't think it is because their own woman told them it was. Their woman sabotaged them, and they did it on purpose. And they meant to do that. Willful deception, just lying. Knew what they were doing. And I'm going to tell them, I'm going to say to them that Western women, white and black, but that black women brag about this the most, made a determination that they were going to screw the guys that, that were a little bit irresponsible. Arrogant jerks is the best way I would be able to describe them in this language. I'm going to say they would screw they decided that they were going to screw arrogant jerks and bring those babies to nicer, responsible men to raise. And they made, made it plain that nice, responsible men did not qualify. They were going to have to remain virgins and the women were never going to be. And now they sitting up talking about they celibate. I'm going to tell them in the West, every woman has a price. The difference is that some women sell a bit to the man they smash and other women sit up and try to get and they do all of these things to get these men over here to pay so they can screw this guy for free. So they're still collecting the price, just not from the guy they screw and they do it by deception. I'm going to tell them. You wait until I figure out a way to translate dual mating strategy into Arabic. Paternity fraud into Arabic. You wait until I learn how to translate these things in ways they will be able to understand. Because they're already fighting feminism over here. They know what the word simp means here. You wait till I explain to them that since they already know the English word W-H-O-R-E, you know, the 304, since they already know what that word means in English, you wait until I explain to them that the majority of you in the West have made a determination to be that, except with, the, with one difference. Instead of collecting your fee from the man you smash, you're going to try to trick other men into paying you so you don't have to charge that man nothing. He hits for free because other men are paying without hitting it. You wait till I explain this to them. Your goose is cooked. Here it is. Because when I tell these men, and I'm not in a position really to tell them that much right now, but when I begin to tell these men, and when I start meeting brothers, I'm going to tell them because I'm going to give black men the advantage here, especially where I live. When I meet them and I start to tell them about this and they get the advantage, your goose is going to be cooked. Got the nerve to be mad because someone told you celibacy is not the answer or vows of celibacy are not the answer. <laughs> They're not. Now, if you were going to be chased, then just be chased. And even then, you're probably going to have. Let me talk to you women that are chased. You're not celibate on one end. That's kind of an extreme. You're not loose and thoughts on the other. You'd like to get the bump and grind, get busy on, but in the context of a marriage, and that is righteous. Whether you Muslim or Christian and you want that, let me go ahead and tell you something right quick. Since you have not distinguished yourselves from these thoughts that are next to you, since you have been willing to let them make you seem more valuable, you have a situation where you're still going to have to go and get your ding -a -ling. You might have to be on Bumble too, and you can't talk that celibacy stuff. You could talk chastity as long as you're actually a virgin. But you're going to have to go and get your ding -a -ling. Don't worry, they got their guys out there that are virgins too. Oh, that's right. Some of you that are chaste, actually, in your own lives, still want men that are experienced. And you're going to have to work that out too. I hope that what I've said helps and is a benefit in the long run. Appreciate y'all listening. And to the usual audience members, I'd like to thank you all for flying with us 
again here on Jet Black Airways, where Jet Black is also a verb. Keep Jet Black with us until the wings and the wheels fall off. Black patriarchy until extinction of Judgment Day and gender justice forever. And now black heterosexual non-select male power just because they don't like it.